is a pleasure to speak with you all today. Thanks so much for the invitation. <laughs> but I have really enjoyed listening uh, to everybody speak. Uh, been very encouraged listening to your sermons, and uh, I just hope that I'm able to speak something relevant into your lives in the next 10, 15 minutes. Please open your Bibles up with me to Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. And uh, it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Now Israel, or us, in uh, modern day, represents the clay. And the potter is a representation of God, God the Father. The important thing is here that we got to realize is that the clay broke. How it broke isn't important. But the fact of the matter is, it broke. Some translations say that the clay was flawed. Some say that it broke. Some say that it just was marred. But the fact is, it was broken. The potter used the broken clay to create a vessel that was good in his sight. Me, I come from a broken home. Uh, I enjoyed listening to some of your all stories. Uh, and, and studies show, actually, from what I was uh, researching this week, that about half of the people in this room are likely to come from divorced homes like I am. Uh, I never remember my parents being together. They divorced when I was like two years old. And so I pretty much grew up. A broken home is home to me. Like, that's, this, that's what I grew up with. And so that's kind of the, the route of my life. And brokenness became real to me at a very young age. But the, what I've realized is that brokenness is a reality of all of us, really. Because we live in a fallen and a broken world. So it's not just me. We people are born in sin and in desperate need of Jesus Christ. And our lives from start to finish are full of pain and, 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 and suffering and, and one thing after the other. And if I had to guess, I would say that probably pretty much everybody in this room at some point or another has faced some type of brokenness. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe you went through a breakup. Maybe you, you, know, maybe, maybe, maybe you had an abandoned relationship. You know? There's got to be something. There's some way, somehow. But I, I, I'm just, if I had to guess... I'd say that probably just about every one of us in here has experienced brokenness in our lives. So what do we need to know when we're going through the motions of life and basically everything we're doing, we feel like we're doing just enough to hold the pieces together as we make it through each day? What do we need to know? Well, the message that I've prepared for you guys is kind of summed up right here. I'm just playing. Can everybody see that up there? Here it is. I think this is important. It's everything that the enemy uses to break you God uses to make you. But there's an important disclaimer here. Can you guys see it in red? There's an important disclaimer. This only works one way. The, the disclaimer is this. If Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, if he's not your Lord and Savior, then this doesn't work for you. My message is irrelevant to you, and I'm speaking mere words. It's mere theory if Jesus Christ isn't the Lord and Savior of your life. But because since we're in seminary, I'm assuming that all of us have made that decision. I think that it is relevant to us. Well, there's two types of brokenness. There's two types of situations, really, that we deal with. There's one that is our fault, and there's the one that's not our fault. And uh, I think the Bible gives us great examples of both, and I'm going to use two of them from the Bible to explain each one. So example number one, the brokenness that you didn't cause, the one that's not your fault. Let's look to Moses for a second. He was a vessel born in a broken situation. So Moses was... We, we know the story, and I'm going to quickly recount it, but you guys, fought, you guys know the story. Moses was, was born in a situation of a broken family. You know, the Pharaoh, the evil Pharaoh that rose up, you know, had all the babies, all the male Hebrew babies killed, uh, thrown into the river. And Moses' mom, you know, she hides him for three months, and when she can't hide him anymore, she takes him too, and she sends him off in the river. And uh, none other than the Egyptian princess picks Moses up and raises him, and Moses is raised Egyptian. So he's fully Egyptian as far as he knows, but he's also fully Hebrew because what do we know? We, we know that his real biological Hebrew mom also was a part of raising him, nursed him, nurtured him, and, and was a part of his everyday life. So when he grew up, he grew up with this broken division inside of him that at one point, as an adult, we see it first. 
He's sitting there watching, and he sees a fellow brother Hebrew being beaten by a fellow Egyptian soldier. Here Moses is feeling fully Egyptian, but also feeling maybe fully Hebrew. And he, uh, you guys know what happens. He, he uh, you know, goes off on the Egyptian guy, you know, hides his body in the sand, and then runs for the hills because he's afraid that people are going to know what he did, and he knows that the Pharaoh's going to be mad at him, and you know, and uh, so he, he takes off. He leaves. How many of you guys? If you were completely honest, you'd say, you've been broken to the point that you just want to leave. How many of you guys would say, you know, I've been broken to the point that I just want to leave, especially when you feel like the situation is not even your fault? <laughs> like, you feel like, you know, I, I, I'm broken, and everybody around me, I'm born in this situation, and just, it's just not even my fault, man. I, I, just, I just want to leave this. I think Moses kind of felt that way. But if it wasn't for this broken situation, the Exodus would have never happened the way that it did. The Moses that we know would never be the Moses that we know if he wasn't broken. And God used his brokenness to bring his people out of Egypt. And who better than a man who was fully Egyptian and fully Hebrew to bring the Hebrew people out of Egypt? Can you imagine him at the throne of the Pharaoh and like, I was in your house, I grew up here and approaching him? Pharaoh in this story symbolizes the enemy intended to bring harm on the Hebrew people and Moses by attempting to murder him and, uh, and break him from his family. But God used that very situation to bring deliverance to the Hebrew nation and to make one of the greatest leaders of all time. You may be broken and it's not even your fault. But can I tell you today that it's not without a cause. The king has a plan for you. He hasn't forgotten you. And your pain has not been for nothing. Moses found God in the midst of his brokenness. Everything that the enemy used to break Moses, God used to make Moses. Let's look at example number two. This is brokenness that you did cause. We're going to look quickly, real quick, to, uh, to the story of David. Not the whole story of David because it's a super long story. We're just going to look to a piece of his story. We're going to look at the broken parts of David's story. David was a vessel who chose brokenness at times. If you look at David's house, it was different than that aspect of Moses' house. It was, it was a situation where, remember, he was the anointed one. He was the chosen guy. He was the one people sang about. He was the guy who defeated Goliath. He was the guy yeah. among men. He was the man among men. He was the one everybody looked to. But there was also parts about David. There was also times in his life where he was the one who went through the most heartbreak. Not because of other people's fault, but a lot of times because of his fault. Because it was him. He brought it on himself. He chose. You guys remember the story. I mean, the scandal. David and Bathsheba, you know, he goes. supposed to be off fighting. He chooses to stay back. He sets the trap for her, manipulates her, and then tries to cover it all up afterwards. This is the great and mighty David. Remember that. But you know what happens. Bathsheba's pregnant. He calls Uriah in, but Uriah is too faithful to fall for it. He doesn't fall for the trap, so David sets another trap, sends him out to battle, has him killed. God exposes David's sin and Nathan the, through Nathan the prophet, and then David and Bathsheba's first son die. David finds himself on his knees. I think David finds himself on his knees quite a few times because of situations like this. Have you ever found yourself in a mess, in a broken situation, because you know it is your fault? Mm. I know I have. I think I'm thankful for these times in Scripture because I think it's uh, it's the times I can relate most to David. Mm. Because I have a lot of those times where it's, it's my fault. And I find myself there. Have you been broken before God, knowing that if it wasn't for Him, you'd just be a bunch of broken pieces? Yeah. Wow. David can relate, and he actually writes his feelings down in Psalm 51. If you want to turn there with me, I want to read it. Uh, I'm just going to read a verse or two. It's, it, it's, he, he writes this psalm right after Nathan the prophet. If you remember the story, right after Nathan the prophet comes and exposes sin, he's like, okay, now it's I'm caught. All right? So he writes this thing down. He says, first one, have mercy on me. Oh, God. That's pretty familiar, right, for us, right? Like, have you been there? It's like, I, mean, I, I don't know. I'm the only one. Maybe I'm like, I've been there. Like, have mercy on me, oh, God. Because I know I really screwed this up. Skip down to verse 16. We don't have time to read the whole passage, but... He says, for you did not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You did not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God, here he goes, you ready? Are a broken spirit, 
a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you do not despise. We know this place all too well. It's when you know there is nothing you can do to make the situation better, but all you can do is fall on your face before a holy God and just pray and thank Him for the cross. Because yeah. if it wasn't for that, we'd be hopeless. I love how David says that his sacrifice to God is his broken heart. Remember, this is the man who God said, I pick you over your brothers because, not because you're the strongest guy around, but because you have the best heart. And this is the same guy, the same man now that we find broken in spirit before God. When your heart is broken, God notices that. And he won't turn you away. The enemy tried to destroy David by attacking his weaknesses and throwing as much guilt and shame on him as possible. But God was there to save him. What the enemy meant to break David, God used to make David. If you, if you recount, there is also a passage where it says right shortly after that that David and, uh, and Bathsheba they have another son. And his name would be Solomon. And, and in chapter 12, of, of basically that same almost passage is right at the end. It says, Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him. That shows you brokenness and healing right there. God didn't hate the son. He didn't say, David, you screwed it up. Now there's no hope for you. David made Bathsheba his wife, had Solomon, and be through Solomon that Jesus Christ would come. So I have one more example for you, and that's that of Jesus. Jesus is always in a class all by himself. We're not in that class with him. He's always there by himself. He's just on a whole other level, no comparison to him. He chose to come to a fallen world. His decision to go, it was, it was his decision to go from the throne room of God to the manger in Bethlehem. He was broken not because it was for him, but he was broken for us. He was broken for our sake. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. His body was not broken for him, but for us. See, the enemy meant to destroy him, to crucify him, to break him. But Jesus is in a class all by himself. And he used the cross to break the enemy. Now Satan has been defeated. And it's not that he'll be defeated one day, but it's the battle is already won. He's already Lord. He's already risen. He is and always will be the King of Kings. And he's fully capable of handling any and every broken situation at his feet. So here's the question, friend. Are you going to lay it at his feet? All of us are broken in one way or the other. We live in a fallen and broken world. It's our reality. The question is, how are you going to deal with that? Are you going to do it alone? Or are you going to do it with Him? Are you going to try to take it on? Or are you going to put it at His feet? Far too many people have allowed brokenness to separate them from God instead of drawing them closer to Him. How many people have abandoned their faith because they were broken? How many ministries have closed down? How many seminary graduates are no longer in the ministry? How many pastors quit because the church, and how many churches close because the pastor? Mm. It's in the broken times of life that we gain our true shape and true character. These are the defining moments of who we are and who we're going to be known to be. I don't know about you, but I'm trusting the potter on this one. My vessel is his, and I'm just that. I'm just a vessel. Mm -hmm created and crafted to be used by the master potter. So 20 years from now, may I see you. May you see me passionately pursuing Christ, not giving up when the times get tough. I want to see you charging on. When we're broken, may the potter find us at his feet. And no matter what situation we face, let us always remember that everything the enemy used to break you, God used to make you. If you're one of his. Thank you.